What I did in the, in my, I call it my previous life, I learned that there are many people, many great ideas and all sorts of input that's valuable. And if you can find a way to create a vision that's shared, that's the success of many great companies. I started out in high school. I knew that I wanted to be a professional at something. So when I got finished high school, I applied to Fleming College and Heavy Equipment Program and uh, loved it. While I was in college, I worked for a small construction company and uh, I saw some professionals there and I saw some not very professional people there. And I decided I wanted to be one of the professionals, a company called Caterpillar, Caterpillar Equipment. When I saw them and I saw their field service people, I realized that's who I wanted to be. I can remember the day actually, a van pulled up and they were trying to fix this large machine and they had done this. And you know, they're cursing and swearing because they have no idea what they're doing, pulling parts and doing this. This guy came over and I walked over to him and said, sir, could you explain to me what you're going to do when you do it? He looked at me. He said, I will share everything. Just his whole demeanor and the way he did it systematically, logically, and understood what he was doing. But I realized he'd worked hard, he'd found an opportunity, and he knew what he was talking about. And that's what I wanted to be. So there was only one place in the world I wanted to work. When I got finished college, they weren't hiring. It was a recession. 1980. The economy was in the tank. So I phoned the manager of personnel. One day he said to me, we have an opening coming up in Hamilton. I said, great. Where's Hamilton? <laughs> so he told me, so I drove to Hamilton for an interview. That was the beginning of my career. And I am so thankful to them. So I spent some time there. I learned to be professional. I learned whatever you do, you have to eventually make a decision. Get your facts in line, make a decision and move forward. If it doesn't work, review it all again and just repeat that process. I would go back to Fleming College and I was a guest lecturer and I was a chairman of the board of advisors of the heavy equipment program. People kept saying to me, you should be a teacher. And I kept thinking, you guys are crazy. That's the last thing I would want to do. I would just think, why would anybody consider doing this? Isn't that funny? So when my experience in high school, I had some wonderful teachers. I hate to say it, but I had some teachers that were just teachers because I think they couldn't really find anything else to do. They had a level of interest, but they didn't have any passion or desire. I saw what I didn't want to be, and I came to the school for one reason only, and that was to help students learn, period. I did not come for money. When I first came to the school, my paycheck dropped to a third of what it was. That was a huge adjustment, to say the least. So everything I do, I have a filter. And if you look up there, it's written on the wall. You see it says, do they know you love them? What I mean by that is, do they know that what I'm doing is for a reason for them? So my background in being professional, being purposeful, I expect students to learn. A caterpillar and in my own business, I gained a lot of experience and understanding of dealing with people. I also, like I'm here at six o'clock in the morning because I have a meeting at 7.30 because I have a class at nine o'clock. That's three things. All that came out of knowing that my time's valuable. When I'm going to classroom, I want to make sure I'm delivering value to those students. And if it's not working the way I'm delivering it, just like a machine, if it doesn't work, you have to change something. Then I back up, I make a change, and I do it again. And I just keep doing that relentlessly till it works.